there, and welcome to the Saturday and the octave of Easter. I hope this day finds you as well as can be expected. Our reflection today is going to come from the Gospel of, of Mark. So let's begin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When he had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companion, who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along their way in the country. They returned and told the others, and they did not believe them either. Later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the early 50s, my dad, like many young people, didn't quite know what he wanted to do with his life. He knew he didn't want to go to college, and he knew he didn't want to live on a farm the rest of his life. So in 1954, my dad joined the Army. After his boot camp and his specialty training, my dad soon found himself in France, stationed in the French countryside. See, Dad was EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal, which means he blew things up. So there in the French countryside, he and his unit would dispose of the unexploded bombs and shells that the farmers would find in the countryside out there. And here's my dad, a young man. Soon he was visiting all the cities in Europe that he had only read about in school. Places like Paris, Paris, Florence, and Rome. Going to countries like Spain and Germany and Austria, all the things that people often dream about. He and some of his buddies had a trip planned one weekend, but before the trip took place, a family that he had befriended invited him to the wedding of their only daughter. My dad allowed his buddies to use his car and he went to the wedding. He had a little small Renault that he had picked up while he was in France. After the wedding, my dad stayed with the family, sleeping in the bunkhouse out behind the main house with the four sons that the family had. The next morning he got up and returned to base. As he entered the mess hall there, that day, those inside stared at him with disbelief. He said one gentleman even dropped his tray when they noticed that he had entered the building. He soon found himself in his CO's office and they, re they began to reveal to him what took place. His buddies were returning home the night before on a foggy night and they didn't see the truck disabled in the middle of the road. They ran the car all the way up underneath the truck. The truck and the car and the bodies were so mangled that they didn't even have time to figure out who was in the car. See, they just thought that it was my dad's car, he was driving, and that he had been killed. They really couldn't believe that he was alive. Disbelief, kind of the main thread that ties all of these gospel, the readings today in this gospel, doesn't it? Jesus first appears to Mary Magdalene. When he appears to her, 
she goes back to the others and explains to them that she has seen the Lord. But they don't believe her. Why not? What was it that would cause them doubt? What was it that would cause them not to believe that Mary had seen the risen Christ? Did they think that Mary was delusional? Maybe in their sorrow, did that cause them doubt? Or was it the fact that she was just a woman and they really didn't trust her judgment? What was it that caused their disbelief? The second appearance come to the two gentlemen walking in the countryside. Many Bible scholars believe that those two gentlemen walking were what the gentlemen that we read about in Luke's gospel on the road to Emmaus. There they were, heads down, walking in sorrow, walking away from Jerusalem, walking away from the holy city. And it's there that Jesus appears to them. And there joyfully, they go back and proclaim that they had seen the Lord. But the others, they don't believe. And finally, Jesus appears to the eleven. They're locked in that room. They're gathered around that table. And Jesus rebukes them for their disbelief. You know, I think all of us can fit into either one of these three stories that we read about here and today in Mark's gospel. We all have a past, just like Mary Magdalene. We're all out there eager, searching for Christ. Some of us wonder. Some of us even walk away sometimes. But isn't it funny how when Jesus reveals himself to us, our lives change, our paths go in a different direction. And some of us are even gathered here around his table. But there's things that we lock inside. We may even have a hardness in our heart. But Jesus comes to us, even in our sorrow, even in our doubt, even in our disbelief. You know, my dad told me one time that he often wondered what would have happened if he would have been in that car that night. No, not the fact that he'd have been killed, but he'd have wondered if he would have been driving, if he would have seen that truck and avoided that accident, what would have become of those gentlemen's lives? What would have happened to them if they wouldn't have died? What would have taken place if Mary Magdalene had never seen Christ? if he'd have never come to her there. How about the two gentlemen on the road? Would they have just kept on walking? Would they have went back to their old way of life? What about the 11 there locked behind those doors? Would they have just stayed there? Stayed there in their sorrow, in their disbelief? What would have happened to this world if the gospel had never been proclaimed, what would this world be like today? I think sometimes we too lock ourselves up in our doubt, in our sorrows, in our disbelief, especially in the goings on that are happening today. But remember one thing, the latch to that lock is on the inside of the door. Unlock the door. Unlock what's holding you from allowing the person of Jesus Christ into your life. Then you too may open up and meet the person of Jesus Christ and everything will change. 
then you too may proclaim the gospel to all that you meet this day. Please continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you this day. Thank you, and God bless.